Tom Masla from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. Uh, let me pass to you both to share about a new curriculum offered on MIT's app, which makes complex AI concepts accessible and relevant through project-based learning. Over to you. Perfect. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, so I'm Prerna Ravi, and I'm a PhD student at MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. And I'm John Maslett, and I'm an assessment specialist at the Scheller Teacher and Education Program Lab at MIT. And uh, together with our colleague Robert Parks, we're going to talk about our approach towards democratizing uh, data science and AI literacy uh, through an engaging uh, and student-centered curriculum that we have developed in the last one year. So data literacy is a, com a foundational component of AI literacy. In one of the leading AI literacy frameworks, Long and McGurko outlined 17 core competencies that make up AI literacy. As you can see, three of these are directly rooted in data science and data literacy. They also give design considerations for teachers, administrators, and curriculum developers who are creating AI literacy uh, experiences for students. Their third design consideration is contextualizing data. They tell us that we need to create experiences that encourage learners to investigate who created a data set, how the data was collected, what the limitations of a data set are, and also to use data that is relevant to learners' lives. The work of Long and McGurko has been a foundational guiding influence on our work in data science education. So I wanted to start off by posing a question to the audience just for a few seconds. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the term data science? Just think about it for a couple of seconds. It's precious. Okay. Cool, let's review. Okay, so this is a word cloud that we created from a similar question that we posed to the audience at the MIT AI Education Summit that was held in the summer this year. And as you can see, some of the terms, keywords that typically come up uh, involve obviously data, uh, statistics, analyzing big data sets, even links to humanity, etc. But one thing that sort of not is overshadowed or not talked about as much is this aspect of data collection, which is what we want to hone in on. So this is a snapshot from the big ideas in K-10 data science framework that was put out by the Stanford Graduate School of Education. And uh, this has been adapted from the GAZE-2 framework, which is a leading statistics and data science education framework in the United States. And it specifically talks about the different competencies that students should pick up on when they are learning new data science skills in schools. And one of the things that sort of gets overlooked or even students don't think about when they think about the word data science is this aspect of personal data collection, collecting data that's personally relevant to their life and to their local community. Okay. Um, another problem that we really want to hone in on when, this, uh, when we talk about this aspect of data collection is this problem of author proximity. This was a term that was coined by Professor Victor Lee at Stanford's Graduate School of Education. And he talks about this um, idea of having students engage in data collection that's sort of inherent in their local communities so that it better represents their own personal lived experiences and their prior knowledge as well. And this way, the data that they collect is also something that they are responsible for and they have greater authorship over the data they want to be analyzing. Another problem that we have come across um, in data science and STEM education, more broadly speaking, is that most data science tools that are out there tend to be desktop friendly or laptop friendly. We don't see a lot of offerings on mobile phones, which means students are confined to their desks in, at their homes or in schools and they don't really get a chance to sort of go around in the wild and collect data from outside in their environment. So what we propose is this data science toolkit that was created by our App Inventor team that we are a part of. And MIT App Inventor is um, an online open source environment where students can use blog-based programming to create their own mobile apps. It's similar to Scratch, it uses the same sort of uh, like uh, backend. And what we are able to do using that is that students are now able to create their own mobile apps to collect data in the wild, in their environments using microbit sensors. 
microbit sensors are easily accessible they are very affordable they are available on any online website for teachers to have a few in their classroom so now uh, students are able to use microbit sensors and build apps on uh, mit app inventor that they can then use to collect data outside in their environment we're aware that creating and releasing a tool does not necessarily translate to its use. So we've created a curriculum to guide teachers and students in creating personally relevant projects using the Data Science Toolkit. In the first module, students learn about how the microbit sensors work. They start asking statistical questions and answering them by collecting data in their communities. They're also introduced to the capabilities as well as drawbacks and limitations of sensors. And this is important because sensors are one of the primary ways that AI devices and technology interact with and gain information about the world. In the second module, students start to explore publicly available data sets. In doing so, they start to apply some of the data science competencies in the way that they're used in the workplace as well as in the scientific they're introduced to visualization, modeling, prediction, and inference. And they do this through scaffolded coding activities and guided discussions. They're also introduced to the idea of bias and start asking questions about the, how the way data is collected and which data are included in a data set can change the way it's interpreted and can influence applications that are created using that data. We also create some resources for teachers who are implementing the curriculum. These include teacher guides that have learning objectives that are aligned with the GAZE 2 framework, key vocabulary, and step-by-step -step directions on how to carry out the learning activities. There are also assessments. The assessments seek to measure not only the data science competencies addressed in each lesson, but also student attitudes towards data science, as well as their intrapersonal and interpersonal skills like collaboration and self-advocacy. The assessments can be used not only by students to reflect on their own growth and change throughout the curriculum, but also by teachers to modify their instru instruction and personalize it to their specific group of learners. So we have conducted a few pilots uh, with our data science curriculum in the last one year and uh, some key points to keep in mind. So one uh, area that we were really interested in exploring is how this curriculum would adapt to an online setting. And we were interested in this to make sure that the curriculum can be accessed more widely and uh, it can be available to a global audience as well. Another area that we were really interested in is making sure that this curriculum can serve historically marginalized groups in computing. In particular, we looked at gender minorities and low-income first-generation uh, students in public schools in the United States. So these are a few examples of projects that have come out of our curriculum. This is a really simple project that students came up with where they placed microbit sensors in their refrigerators to sort of track the um, fluctuations in light and temperature data as in when someone in their house was opening the refrigerator. And the idea was to see how this might have broader implications on their household energy consumption that comes with it. Another example that we have seen with our toolkit, the mobile data science toolkit, uh, is from two students from Ghana uh, who were participants of the MIT Global AI Hackathon. What they did is they used uh, sensors to collect data on wind speed and solar radiation to see the implications it has on renewable energy harvesting. Another example that we have seen is from an undergraduate uh, researcher uh, who collected data on um, sort of local waterways in her neighborhood and she compared it to the data that has been put out by the United States Environmental Protection Agency database to see how her personal data collection might sort of compare with the databases, the large scale databases that are out there. Uh, another really funky example that we have come across is from students uh, placing temperature, humidity, and moisture sensors in a plant that they were growing. And uh, they sent all that data to ChatGPT for analysis. And using prompt engineering, they sort of uh, had ChatGPT personify the plant and to communicate back to the end user specific step-by-step -step instructions on how to take care of different plant species. So uh, we have unpacked a few student experiences from our curriculum from the various pilots that we did. So some of the big uh, changes that we have seen was around accessibility. 
So uh, first of all, the fact that we are using uh, mobile friendly devices means that this is available in a broader setting and students can very easily um, like use some of these devices with non-technical backgrounds as well. Which means they are now feeling a lot more confident with um, using Bluetooth devices and graphing data with MIT App Inventor. Another big change that we have seen is from our personal data collection methods. Uh, students are now understanding how the data that they collect has broader implications on uh, climate change, for instance, and how they can take active steps to keep their environment safe in the long run. And another big change that we have seen, uh, which speaks to the first thing that we spoke about, was this more holistic understanding of what a data science curriculum and what data science should look like more broadly. Um, so students are now thinking about how the data comes from the environment around them, how it links to microwave sensors, and the electronic devices that they interact with on a daily basis. Uh, finally, uh, two things. So first of all, the MIT App Inventor platform that we are using houses 11.2 million active users uh, from 200 countries, and 48% of those users actually come from the developing world. And secondly, the curriculum that we spoke about, uh, the latest version of it will be available on the MIT Day of AI website. It's called dayofai.org. Uh, so if you go to that website, you can find the latest version of our curriculum soon. And uh, this website has been in place for the last um, two to three years, and it uh, has reached over 500,000 students worldwide. Thank you so much. And if you're interested in getting in touch with us, please do email us. The QR code that you see on the top right hand corner is a paper that we recently had accepted at this ACM 60 conference that talks about the same curriculum in detail. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fernando John. Um, John, you mentioned earlier, I think, that uh, the, the pilot was focused, of the curriculum was focused on Boston, but that there's also a national US program that's also been piloting it. And great to hear that it's soon to be on the website so it will be internationally available. And I think because local context plays such a key role in, um, in how this is actually being rolled out, it would be great to see the wide variety of applications of, of the tool um, in the near future. So thank you. Um, we